Dr. Alano, thank you for being part of Bayani's official coverage of CONI-16 and to agreeing to this filmed interview. Um, apomorphin is the only molecule approved for acute intermittent treatment of off episodes for advanced PD patients. However, it is currently only approved as a subcutaneous injection in the United States. Um, because APL130277 is a sublingual um, formulation of apomorphin, uh, it can allow patients to easily administer the drug during off episodes. Is this the drug's main strength? Uh, which drug are you referring to? You mean the APL product? Well, let me say that apomorphine is a very effective anti-Parkinson drug. It's a dopamine agonist and probably the dopamine agonist that is most close to levodopa in terms of its uh, efficacy. So. Uh, it is interesting that this drug, which is so efficacious, is not used very widely. Uh, there are several reasons for that. One of them is that apomorphine, when you take it by mouth, is very rapidly metabolized, so there's nothing left to work in the body. So you have to give it parenterally, which usually means by injection, or in the case of the United States approval, it's by injection. Now, the problem is that if you give it by injection, you have to assemble it, put it together, so there's some difficulty for Parkinson patients, and then you have to inject yourself with it, or a partner has to inject you. Um, it works when you do that. It's very effective. But because of the needle, because of the inconvenience, uh, many fewer patients use it than otherwise might. Uh, what it does is it bypasses the gut, gets into the bloodstream very quickly, and so it can give you an anti-Parkinson response very, very quickly. Uh, in con contrast, oral levodopa, when you take it, may take 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half to work. Sometimes it doesn't even work at all. So for a poor patient who's having an off episode, they go uh, out to a restaurant and they turn off they take a levodopa pill and it's not predictable, whereas an injection of apomorphine is predictable and turns them on with very high regularity. Now, the other problem that's limited the value uh, or the use, rather, of apomorphine in the United States is that it requires a rather complex titration schedule, which is time-consuming, uh, involves a lot of the uh, time of the physician, and a lot of them just aren't willing to do that. So between the inconvenience and the needle and the problems with doctors wanting to prescribe it, it has not been widely used. Now the other problem with apomorphine is that it can be associated with subcutaneous nodules, uh, which can be severe, can ulcerate, can be unpleasant. We've minimized that somewhat because of the fact that uh, we make sure they wash the site, we make sure they change the site, they uh, administer the apomorphine in. So that's become less of a problem recently, but it has been a problem. Now the new problem product you're talking about is a, a the APL product is a bilayer that is administered by slipping uh, the uh, strip under the tongue. So it's almost like a, a mint. And it's compared, composed of two uh, layers. One layer neutralizes the pH of the apomorphine, and the other is the apomorphine. And what that does is it reduces the risk that it will cause skin nodules, ulceration, oral problems, and it allows it to be taken directly under the tongue. Now, for many patients, that's way more convenient, way easier than having to put together a needle and inject yourself, especially in public. And from a doctor point of view, we're developing it so that it's going to be much easier to, you know, initiate, to titrate, so it won't take so much time in a doctor's office. So I think those are the big strengths of the new strep, that it's very effective, it contains apomorphine, it has a methodology for reducing the uh, cutaneous side effects, uh, it doesn't require an injection, it's a simple strip you put under your tongue and it will be easier to initiate and titrate. 
Um, how can the collaboration uh, with the Michael G. Fox Foundation focused on the development of platforms for the storage of large volume of patient-gathered data um, help accelerate the pace of clinical trial development? Could you comment on this? Well, Michael J. Fox has really made a major effort to try and make patients aware of trials that are ongoing, both to enable patients to be aware and to participate, and to uh, facilitate companies carrying out the trial. And they've started uh, a, uh, a large database of patients who want to participate in trials. And the advantage of that is if you're doing a study, such as this particular trial, you can uh, develop a relationship with Michael J. Fox and access that database and hopefully get patients who would qualify for your study and recruit them in a much faster time than you might otherwise be able to do. Thank you very much for your time. Is that it? Yeah.